Hi, I'm Danny, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this fake poo as we learn a bit about our digestive system. Our digestive system is all of the parts of our body that link up to help us digest our food. So digestion is how we break down our food into tiny nutrients. The nutrients are then absorbed into the body and help fuel how we move and how we grow. All of the leftover food that we don't absorb into our bodies is a waste and we need to get rid of it. That's what poo is. So to make our fake poo, you're going to need a few things from the kitchen. One banana, six biscuits that are about this size, two teaspoons of cocoa powder, some water, 100 milliliters will be plenty, one teaspoon of cake sprinkles, a teaspoon, a big mixing spoon, some scissors, a masher, a bowl, two plastic sandwich bags, kitchen roll, and something to put the poo into. That could be mugs. In my case, I found a couple toilets. The first thing you do with your food is put it in your mouth and chew it up. So let's add half of our banana, three biscuits, and one teaspoon of cocoa powder to our bowl and start mashing. But this isn't working very well because we're missing something that our mouth makes to help us chew and swallow. Any ideas what that is? It's saliva. So let's add half a teaspoon of water to represent our saliva. There we go. Now our food is mushy enough to swallow. It goes down your food pipe, which is also called the esophagus, all the way down to your stomach. In your stomach, the food meets digestive juices. These juices cover your food, breaking it down and changing it into smaller pieces. Some of these pieces are nutrients that your body can use for energy and use to grow. So let's add another half teaspoon of water to represent your digestive juices and the food gets churned up more by the muscles in our stomach. So we'll give it another stir. Next, it's ready to move into our guts. Our intestines. There are two parts. First, food reaches the small intestine, this long, thin, twisty bit. And then the large intestine, this wider part around the outside. As food travels down the long tubes of your intestine, and meets even more digestive juices, which keep breaking it down. So let's add another half teaspoon of water. Your food also meets loads of friendly germs which live here. The germs also help break down your food into smaller nutrients. And as they feast on it, they release smelly gas. Can you guess how we get rid of that gas? You fart it out. So now the food has been broken down into these smaller pieces that your body can use. But how do they get to where they need to go? The nutrients and the water from all those digestive juices are absorbed through the walls of the intestine and into your bloodstream, where they travel all around your body and fuel you with energy. Now we want to absorb some of the water from our fake poo. It's about to get messy. Take your kitchen roll, scoop up your poop. Ugh. There we go. And then wrap it up and give it a gentle squeeze. How does it feel? You might notice it's starting to get a little damp. That's because the kitchen roll is starting to soak up and absorb some of that liquid. Well done, you've digested your food. Now the last thing to do is get all that leftover waste out of your body. So it's in your intestines. This time I'm using a plastic sandwich bag to represent that. Our intestines are lined with muscles which push the food forward so that it can only travel in one direction. So give the bag a squeeze until our fake poo needs to get out through our fake bum. Now prepare your toilet and use some scissors to carefully make a hole in the corner of the sandwich bag. It's time to poo! Ew! There you have it, your very own fake poo. Now, sometimes you might have very runny poo called diarrhea. Lots of things can cause diarrhea, and one of those is a living thing called a parasite. Some parasites are so small you can only see them under a microscope. 
Earlier on, I said we have friendly germs living in our intestines which help us. Well, some parasites are unfriendly germs that can get into our bodies and make us feel unwell. Let's demonstrate this with another fake poo. Here's one I prepared earlier, and it's reached our intestines. Now, these sprinkles represent the parasite. They might get into the body by being swallowed in some water, and then they make a home for themselves in the intestine. I'm going to add my sprinkles directly to the fake poo. The parasite can damage the walls of the intestines, stopping them from working properly. Because of this, the water and nutrients can't be absorbed into your bloodstream. As well as making poo runny, this can be dangerous for our health because the parasites steal our nutrients and we lose too much water. Scientists here in our labs at the Crick are studying how these parasites work so that in the future we can help treat people who are affected. Let's add a teaspoon of water here. You know, I think that's still looking a little too dry to be diarrhea. So you can add as much water as you like to make it real runny. Oh. This is real gooey. This time, since the water can't be absorbed through the kitchen roll, we pour a runny poo, our diarrhea, straight into the large intestine bag. Ah, looking good. And it's pushed through the tube, ready to be squeezed out. <laughs> I hope you made some very realistic looking fake poo. Why don't you experiment at home with different ingredients? To make this a real experiment, first think of a question you want answered and work out what one thing you need to change to test that question. Then think about how you will measure the effects of what you're changing. Maybe you want to see what effect different types of food have on how thick your fake poo is. Get creative with it. Just be careful where you leave your fake poo.